This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, all it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Back to the conversation. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Coming up, the return of Who Sucks Less right after emails to the Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got me. Come on, from today's question, good or bad, what about you from your past always gets brought up. Guys, uh, Creepy Neighborhood Ginger here. Reason why I'm known as the Creepy Neighborhood Ginger is because when I was a kid and my friends and I happened to be around an attractive woman, I had no self-esteem or game. So my typical reaction would be to just sit there and smile very creepily. Anytime a woman would ask what that kid's deal was, one of my friends would inevitably tell them, ah, that's just your Creepy Neighborhood Ginger kid. Don't mind him. I don't have that issue anymore, but still, that is what my friends call me, and eventually I just adopted it. It's never positive when someone says, what's this person's deal? Yeah. <laughs> it's never a positive yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not. Guys, stuck in traffic on my custom motorcycle downtown Puyallup, got pulled over by a bicycle cop, <laughs> almost impounded my bike because I didn't have my endorsement. I will never live this down. That from Josh. I have a buddy I went to high school with named Sal. Saul. Started with an S. Mm-hmm. He got pulled over by a bike cop. I, like, I mean, I still want to tell the story. What, what happened to him? He was in a car and got pulled over by a bike cop. And we were like, how'd you get pulled over by a bike bicycle cop? When did gun it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, of course that guy's never going to live it down. <laughs> you rode a motorcycle. <laughs> guys, on to the birthdays. Want to wish our super duper son, Quinn, a very happy birthday. May he please have a Homer Simpson fish sandwich and a big old Leroy Jenkins. Lots of love from Mom, Dad, and Felix. Fish sandwich. Are you sure? Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Guys, going to get a birthday shout out to my fiance, Mike from Tacoma. Awesome dad and partner. Hope you have a great day. He's got some Uli's Men's Room Original Sausage for his birthday. So maybe the dirty Germans could talk about the boat meat. Thanks, guys. That from Zoe. Yeah, of course you have the boat meat. Tonight you make it the little man and the boat meat. Yeah, usually with the sausages, I have jokes, but that one is delicious. Just put it in your mouth already. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe something else will in between the buns. I told us, want to give a shout out to my buddy from the other side of the world in Hull, England. His name is Colonel Parker, and I just want to say I appreciate him for making my days better and being such a cool person. Hopefully, we will uh, have a few cold ones soon. Please give him some turtle wax, a happy Chinooka, and a big old bong hit. Take care, guys. That from Manuel Vera. Uh. Happy Chinooka. Patrol, I love your guys' show. It's my 26th rotation around the giant fireball in the sky. What I need more than anything is to party with the one and only Captain Crunch. After this year, we just need, I hope I need to cut loose. Please ask him what I can expect from a wild night out with a captain. By the way, guys, congratulations on 50 years and over 3,000 shows. You guys are hilarious. That from Dan Matthews in Linwood, Washington. Well, depending what kind of time you want to have, I think we should move my boat to international waters. As it turns out, shaving certain animals and doing things with their rectum frowned upon in most countries. Crunch berries. <laughs> Guys, it's my big sister Samantha's birthday today. Can she get a big old bong rip and some thrill shotgun gets? Happy birthday, dude. Love your littlest brother, Colton. Kid! 
Get. All of it, all of it. Today's my husband Dylan's 28th birthday. He's been working all over time that he can so he can uh, help pay the bills and use whatever's left over to put toward his 88 Toyota pickup truck. He's turning that into a wheeler. So how about a little kid fish sandwich and Coach Ted telling him that working his butt off will all be worth it in the end. That from Ashley. Fish sandwich. You got to keep working hard. Now, will it be worth it? I don't know. You tell me. It's a summer day. Two days after a rain. That's a deep mud holler. How are we going to get through it? With that damn truck that you paid for. That's how we're getting through it. I'll see you out there. Guys, please give a birthday shout out to my little brother, Connor. He turned a whopping 33, and some of those dirty Germans would be awesome. Footnote, he is a plumber, and his last name is Inman. Yeah, I plan on being Inman later tonight, but I will start with you first. Yeah, well, it's good thing my last name is Altman. Inman, Altman. <laughs> I will yell for both of you, Inman, Altman, Inman, Altman. Yeah, so I always yell my last name when I have sex. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michelle, today is my 33rd trip around the sun. Listen to you guys all the time. I'd love to get that fish sandwich remix montage that you guys do. In honor of my trip to Fogel de Chao in Bellevue. Oh, Fogel de Chao, yeah. Yeah, That's man, amazing. that place is awesome. What is that all about? No, That's me. a Brazilian steakhouse there, where you have the card where it's like you leave it on green and they come by. There's been different versions. That's like the famous one. It is okay. legit. But they just keep bringing meat. And then you turn the card to red. Uh, get some caparinis as well. All right, that sounds caparinis. great. Caparinis. That's so what's it's, uh, it's the drink of Brazil. That's wow, what okay. uh, Matthew's doing for his birthday. He says, if you ever uh, <laughs> never been there, I highly recommend it. They just bring you high end meat until you can't take anymore. I'll keep on rocking. You guys are the best. Can I get a, a filet of sandwich? fish sandwich? So you know I got I'll have a right. fish sandwich. Oh, brother, can, can I, I get have a fish sandwich? Fish sandwich? Can I have a fish sandwich? With the cheese and the tartar on the side. Oh, Is it too early for a fish, fish sandwich? sandwich? Uh, uh, cheese and tartar on the side. Oh, yeah. I smell the fish sandwich. Maybe it's a pure relish in the morning. Fish sandwich. At noon. At noon. And at night. And I buy you a fish sandwich. Guys, birthday oh, wishes. Don't want a oh, fish sandwich. God, I always do that. Every birthday time. wishes and kisses to my hubby Dave. I uh, hope you have a great one. Looking forward to many, many more. Can you guys give him some uh, awesome dirty Germans and a pep top? Uh, pep talk, please. Love you, sweetheart. That from the lovely Brenda. Yeah, for your birthday, we will celebrate absolutely shagtastic style. But tonight, my safe word will be funny. But I can only say it's like that. Yeah, I hope you don't mind that spicy brown pub mustard on the side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it gets in the, the edges, we say. Yeah, his mustard slinger. Yeah, mustard slinger. Yeah, yeah it's more like a mustard, mustard mitt. It catches what it all. <laughs> What up, bitches? Like to wish a happy 43rd to Maine. He is a bomb ass husband, dad, uncle, and brother. Love that man. Can he get a uh, happy Chinooka and Coach Ted hyping him for blunts and drinking Tangaria gin while a fat ass is in the smoker? Followed by some gets. Thanks, fellas. That from your one of two black listeners. Happy Chinooka. <laughs> Do I not know that gin? I think it was Tangare. Tangare gin? Yeah, you know Tangare. Right? Yeah. The way she's. Sp- the way you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, well, if we're smoking blunts, probably Tangare. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll tell you what, man. This might sound weird coming from a coach, but he loves smoking blunts. Now, sure, I was a Swisher grape guy's grape flavor for years. Peach is good. But if you want to go old school, let's think Atlanta. Let's think Outcast, White Owls. Going to be hard to find, but they're going to roll up nice. Now, that like Tangare, grapefruit juice. Trust me. Get. Get. Dick! I say my cougar of a wife, Diane, turns 50. She's nine years older. Please have Coach Ted give her a pep talk telling her good things about being half a century. Uh, and please wish uh, Mario a happy birthday. Thanks, guys. That from Dave. Best things about being 50. Well, it's pretty simple. You don't fear things as much. You're less stressful. You laugh at others because you don't care. And frankly, it's easier because you're closer to death. Howdy, y'all. want to give a big old uh, men's room happy birthday to a great friend and a hell of a karaoke singer, rocker, Jeff Howell. Hope he has a great one today. Can Coach Ted give rocker Jeff some uh, sound advice for singing some karaoke and what a uh, guy does at 50? That from the Elk Plain Drifter. I know that's our buddy Jeff that used to show up in the cowboy hats and rode horses. I don't know. Very possibly. It could be. All right, karaoke down at the ranch. <laughs> well, first of all, it's Van's Ranch. So I say you go crazy. Hey, you show up in one of those Borat onesies. <laughs> you start singing, 
and then you get a couple more whiskeys in you. I know, I know, I know he's got them in there. You get about that fifth whiskey in you, and you pick a song. You make sure it's a slow ballad everybody hates. They grab your- a guitar and trash the place. Right, give it your all. Break everything in there, and then run naked out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rules in this ranch. Hi, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yas a Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, <laughs> Schweinefly. Now, the Men's Room wants to know Who Sucks Last? Yay! Time for Who Sucks Last? Team is where you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. It is up to us to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. Now, if you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live or you like KISW on Facebook, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yeah, like you said, to bring three stories. All three of these have been covered on this show probably in the last week or so, but I felt like they deserved a little more attention because the people suck. Now, again, not all of them are the worst people. But you're not going to like any of them, and all of them are unnecessary. Let's talk about our most recent story. We go to England, where a jobless man who's age 41 is suing his parents in a bid to force them to pay, quote, maintenance for life. His name is Faiz Siddiqui. Now, he claims to be completely dependent on his wealthy mom and dad. This is despite being trained as a lawyer and having a degree from Oxford. Keep in mind, he tried to sue Oxford as well. Now, for 20 years, his parents have let him live rent-free in their $1 million flat that they own near London's Hyde Park. All you need to know about London's Hyde Park is it ain't cheap. Now, they also helped cover bills and other outgoings, but they want to slash their support following a family disagreement. We don't know what the disagreement was, but they said, like, you, you're 41, you have a law degree, it's time to live on your own. But he's battling it in a first-of-its-kind case which sadly might affect the rights of every parent in the UK. Now, he reckons he's enlisted to claim maintenance as a vulnerable grown-up child due to health issues that prevented this would-be, uh, which prevented this would-be violation of his human rights, all right? That's his whole thing. So his mom is 69, his dad is 71. They currently give him more than $556 a week. Just want you to keep this in mind. Dude gets about two grand a month. He lives rent-free. And doesn't work in spite of the fact that he has a law degree from a little school called Oxford. Now, he practiced at top law firms, but he's been unemployed since 2011. Case against his parents claiming maintenance. It was rejected last year by a lower court, but now it's gone to their court of appeal, which is getting closer and closer to their version of the Supreme Court. So, again, this is the 41-year-old man. Ain't anything wrong with him except he's a whiny bitch, right? He lives rent-free in a million-dollar flat. He's completely capable of getting a job with a law degree from Oxford, but he won't. Huh. His parents are going to cut him off. Okay. And now he's suing them. People he's are just, taking uh, care of him his entire life, which is their own fault, but he's now suing them. It's been 10 years since I got a job. And again, this is mostly by choice because, again, your motivation to work when you live rent-free and make two grand a month doing nothing, I mean, why would you get a job? Now we go to Fort Myers, Florida, where a 21-year-old guy, he's facing charges after enter his neighbor's yard. And started jumping on the trampoline. No big deal, except that he was doing it naked. Then he knocked on her door, knocked on her door in his birthday suit. A woman inside asked if he needed help. He said no, and he left. (laughs) Then 30 minutes later, she looked out her window and saw him again. Still naked, jumping up and down on the kid's trampoline. Now, it's not clear if he was on drugs or what, but she finally called the cops. Not because he's naked, jumping up and down on the trampoline, but he took it one step further. He started fondling himself. Well, he eventually got off the trampoline, no pun intended, ran up to the door and then told her to let him in. Naturally, she did not let him in. Then he smashed the window. Well, she grabbed her kids, locked herself in the car until the cops showed up. He's facing charges for burglary and criminal mischief. So again, here's your neighbor. He's naked masturbating on your kid's trampoline. And now we go to Rhode Island where, look, I understand if you're a delivery driver, you're probably over a lot of things. But if you're going to do something bad, don't do it on camera. We go to Rhode Island where an ordered, uh, someone there ordered delivery from Whole Foods last week through Amazon Prime. And he gets a notification from his ring doorbell camera when the delivery driver was dropping off his stuff. He clicks over to the video and he sees the delivery driver. P. 
peeing on his groceries. Oh, no. He never met this guy before. It's not like they have some long-standing beef. He doesn't know this guy, but this guy's just peeing on his groceries. Now, the guy says he called Amazon, not the cops, but he called Amazon. They wound up offering to send him a cleaning crew to his house and gave him a $100 credit. And the Amazon spokesperson wasted their time saying, quote, this individual no longer is delivering Amazon packages, blah, 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 and police are investigating. So those are the stories. You have a full-grown man. He has a law degree from Oxford over in England. Lives rent-free, million-dollar flat, whatever. Gets money from his parents. He wants to sue them because they wanted to cut him off. And he could actually act like, I don't know, an adult. We have the guy in Florida who, for reasons we cannot explain, was masturbating naked on his neighbor's trampoline, bouncing up and down, before he finally smashed a window and tried to get in the house. And then we have the Amazon delivery driver who... uh he on the guy's whole food grocery orders for no particular reason at all. Squatted down, just let her rip there. He did that. Just peed on him. I mean, I like the naked guy in the trampoline. I feel like maybe he just had a little too much booze. And I'm even fine with knocking on the door. But once he started... Breaking the window. Scaring the kids. Scar- oh, yeah, I forgot that part. I was going to say, once he started fondling himself on the trampoline. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, come and on, too man. Right. She <laughs> locks herself in the car, I guess, at their house. Yeah, because after... So, keep in mind, he was bouncing naked on the trampoline. She said nothing. That's terrifying. Then, he knocks on her door. Hey, can I come in? She says, no, and he leaves. He comes back 30 minutes later, and he bounces again on the trampoline. But the second time is when he started masturbating. Yeah, then, then he gets off, then tries to smash... Well, he does smash the windows and she hides in the car. You, you just don't know what this guy's capable of. You know, Wait, he's, obviously saying, there's something wrong If with he's him, on right? my trampoline bouncing around naked, he knocks on the door, he just goes back to the naked chair. Like, I would have been like, eh. all right, he's really wasted. Like, I'm not going to call It's just the her cops. and the kids. Right, exactly. I'm not going to call the cops. He'll tire himself out. But once, nope. he's, once he starts flogging the dolphin, like, all yeah. right, you're out of here. So I don't... Flogging, you mean tickling flipper? Yeah. I think the Amazon... So that guy's probably the worst. And then the Amazon driver. He must have just been having a really bad day. Like, if there was some kind of internal beef with those two dudes... No, he didn't like know he hooked guy. up with this girl in high school. Right. Never got over it. So I peed on your groceries. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, That's now, my go-to move. The 41-year-old dude, look, he's an idiot. But I also feel like the parents really allowed this to go on for far too long. And he has a law degree. So I don't feel... As bad for them. So I'm going to say he sucks the least. Okay. I got a different take on this. Just depending on the outcome. Um, The guy bouncing on the trampoline who's naked. Those kids might not ever get on that trampoline anymore. It sounds to me like she was a single parent, too. They wouldn't get on the trampoline because as a parent, I would have gotten rid of the trampoline. She's she's freaking out, and there's a guy, and she doesn't know what he's capable of. Don't scare the kids. Kids Everyone's terrified. She's terrified. What do you do? You call 911. You hope the police get there as fast as you can. That's pretty uh, traumatizing for those kids, I bet. Now, as far as the Amazon driver, you can replace those groceries. Mm -hmm. Thank God he had a doorbell cam. Thank God he recorded it. And he did. And they sent him X amount of different things. Right. So he got his stuff without pee on it. It's still disgusting. It's still ridiculous. Now, the only thing about the jobless guy is, is that this case could change the way and the game that as far as parents maybe owing their kids money in the future. Because it could be a case. It it could could be. It could be. If that is the case, then that's horrible. Because, yes, they let him do it, but if that changes the laws as far as England goes, and children who are adults, and they're adult parents, that's messed up. Potentially. I Potentially. don't think it will. Because I, I, would I think don't think it will either. People in the court system also have kids. Once you're, once, yeah. once you're 18, if you were on your own. If it doesn't change anything, you, though, I'll agree with Ted. <laughs> Look, I don't okay. like alimony, but I, I fathom where it comes from, right? Sure. One person in the marriage doesn't work, they get used to this lifestyle. So, like, for me, like... It seemed like this is almost like alimony. Like you, alimony. Like you should yeah. have kicked him out or to, like for real, drop the hammer. But you didn't. Right, that's so on now, you. Now again, I do not agree with this idiot. <laughs> but now he feels like he has a case. He's like, this is the style of life I'm accustomed I've got to. You, right. That's, it. that's how alimony works. And works, you're sir. right. Hyde Park. They got a lot of money, <sighs> dude. Right? Like, how do you let that go on? His parents live in Dubai. The debate continues on Who Sucks Less. If you like KISW on Facebook or you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live. You are listening to the Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. 
$20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. The men's room is in progress. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Coming up in just minutes, we will drink, we will toast with a shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, quick check in with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, a thief in the UK stole a $191,000 McLaren and police found it at a garage that he took it to to get new locks. <laughs> Come on, man. Good work. I mean, McLarens are so rare. Like, how could you even... Right. You're not going to get very far. That's too yeah. hot of a target, man. That's just... That's why people rob Hondas and Toyotas. Right. That's There's just Accords bad and Civics everywhere. Let's right. look for people who put on an online order for new locks for this car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. That seems odd to show up and just like, I need new locks in this car. <laughs> right. Why don't you just bring your car in, sir? I'm doing it at home. On sure. that car? That's one where a cop can come to any garage and say, huh, have you seen a $191,000 McLaren? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> right. Oh, I can't. Let's rack my brain. A man in Nova Scotia was arrested for DUI after he slowed down traffic driving a lawnmower while drunk. All right. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Great life choices. At, at some point, though, people have to recognize that just because you're on a lawnmower, you're still going to get a DUI. Right. We hear the story all the time. Like, I get it. And in theory, if, like, and if I'm drunk, I'd probably think the same thing. Like, well, I'm going to get on the John Deere. What are they going to do? Right. Arrest you. You can do it when you're cutting your grass. Right. You right. just can't take it off the property. That's exactly. the difference. That's all right? it is. You just got to, it's like a dog, man. Don't leave the yard. <laughs> right. <laughs> However, I am writing to Congress to see if we can't get a, uh, a lawnmower lane put onto the highways out there. Why the hell not? Right. Mm-hmm. Bike lanes, lawnmower lanes. Yeah, I see. I was going to say that's the other thing too. Drunk or not, like, what are you doing with a lawnmower on the highway? <laughs> <laughs> Living, Ted. I assume you're drunk if you're on a lawnmower on the highway. Yeah, right. I Good mean, that's point. the whole thing. Like, if you're on a lawnmower and you're on the highway, I'm going to guess you're drunk. Right. Someone is selling a quote unquote haunted paranormal ghost haunted paranormal ghost guitar for six hundred and sixty six dollars. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, wait, okay. I mean, you can read up on its haunted history and sure. all that fun, happy horse right. pucky. <laughs> you believe it. Horse pucky. Yeah, that's right. Horse pucky. That's right. Yeah, I mean, what, would that work for anything? Like haunted used car. <laughs> right. <laughs> haunted <laughs> apartment for rent. Right. I mean, like, ooh, that's what I want. Oh, man. A woman in North Carolina who was searching for her biological father found out that he's <laughs> he's on the FBI's most wanted list for murdering five family members. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah. He was the guy we talked about Monday. The FBI, he was worked for the FBI. Right. So he knows how to get Avoid, out, right, what they don't captured. look for. He's still on the most wanted list. Ah, uh, Pappy. It's been like 30, it was like almost 40 yeah, years. Yeah, it was like 1970-something. Like something, right. He did in Bethesda, Maryland. Exactly. <laughs> they still can't find him. <laughs> that is amazing. He's supposed though. to be like 86 at this point. So there, it's feasible that he's still around. But they, oh, yeah. But the FBI also said, should you come across him, we still consider him armed, armed and, and dangerous. dangerous. And suicidal. Right. Same profile that they left him with. Not to mention... Because uh, he didn't get a promotion at work. This is all about not getting promoted at work. For real? Right? That's what oh, this... Yeah. Wow. This whole wow. thing stems from him not getting a promotion. I understand why they didn't promote did that. And kudos to the, to him. He's been missing since, what, the 1970s, 1980s? Mm. The FBI has changed as far as their... How far their intelligence goes since then, and he still knows exactly how to elude them? Now, I don't know if he's black or white. Assuming he's a white guy, what he didn't do is try to hide in Kenya. In Kenya, he's a white guy. And if he's a black guy, he didn't try to hide in Norway. Yeah, he was one of those clowns. One of the guys that, uh, the insurrection, January 6th. The clue is. One of the guys that raided the Capitol. And a lot, you know, they're trying to scatter or whatever. And I get it. You don't want to get arrested. But as a white dude, 
And he went to Kenya. So, <laughs> basically, that's the like, authorities are like, we found him. Because everyone in Kenya goes, that's him. That's the like clue stealing is, a $191,000 McLaren and taking it to a garage. Right. The clue is he had a house in Bethesda in the 70s. <laughs> right. Ta-da. Money. U.S. News and World Report just released its annual list of the best state rankings. And congratulations to the repeat champion state, Washington State. Get out of here. Nice. All what? right. Congratulations. Best state. We were, we're just the best. From U.S. News and World Report. We're number one. That's right. We're, we're number, number one. one. Suck it. We're number one. Did it again. We're it's number one. From the back. Uh, they didn't count the weather. We're <laughs> number one. <laughs> we're number one. Uh, uh, a new study found that heterosexual men act differently around women. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get through it. A new study found that heterosexual men act differently around women with visibly erect nipples. You are goddamn right we do. <laughs> that is 100%. You don't try to. Again, I will not say who it was, but there was a woman in here, uh, part of a bigger group of people doing an interview. That's right. And this was an attractive woman. And she was, as we say, nipping the hell out. And and I can't, like, she's good looking anyway. But the fact that she's nipping out, like, all of us were very conscious of this. (laughs) And this was when Robin was with us. So Robin had taken some pictures anyway of the interview process. Yep. And after our guest left, she says, look, (laughs) ma'am, before I post these goddamn pictures. I got to Photoshop her nipples out. We're like, no, Robin, no. She said, yes, because that is the only thing you'll look at. And we you'll said, never erase exactly. them from my mind. Yeah, I feel like there was a short silence after that interview ended. <laughs> oh, wherever of all of us, kind of looking around, like, did anybody else notice? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. yes, we did. Because you had the, you know, you're trying to be professional, so I'm trying not to stare at her nipples mm-hmm. as she's talking to us. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like, like an eclipse. Right. Don't look directly at. It. That's why when I we gonna, need glasses for it. That's why when I walk into Seven Eleven, I always go in with an erection just yeah. to see what happens. <laughs> Damn it. You never know. A new study looked at Google Trends to find the most unique job-related things each state Googles more than any other state. And lucky for you guys, I have the map set up right here so I can check any state in the union except for some reason New Hampshire. Damn it! I wanted to know what was going on in New Hampshire. Forget it then. Mother, you guys were dying to know what happened in New Hampshire. This list sucks, Mike. It is. uh, It has been exempted from this list. So some of the highlights that they have (laughs) here. They feel like you know we don't even care what you think. All right, Mike. What about Texas? Let's go down to Texas. Uh, Corporate goth. (laughs) Corporate goth. (laughs) That is a job-related search in Texas. Corporate goth. Hmm. I'm guessing Austin. Uh, what other states you guys want to know about here before I get to I the I want to hear the places right I just don't, like Kentucky and Alabama. Well, I'm not sure what's out there, so just give us an example. Wait, wait a minute. Is these, these are just weird ones? That's right. So these okay, are okay. the most unique job-related things each state Googles more than any other state. All right. So some of the highlights here, they have. Uh, they, they say some of the searches are more scandalous than others. California's top search, uh, however, is uh, how to become an escort. Jesus. Oh, wow. Miles, that tells me like how to work an In-N-Out burger. Miles, your home state of West Virginia, how to become a moonshiner. All right, well, that's profitable. In that is apropos, yeah. yeah. In Oklahoma, they were one of the latest to, uh, to legalize the How hashish. to kill an elephant. Oh. Uh, marijuana jobs. Okay. All right, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People in Illinois Google drinking at work more than anyone else. <laughs> in Illinois? <laughs> in Illinois. All right. <laughs> yeah. that's Chicago. It's a good town. Sounds like I want to go to Illinois. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah, you definitely do. Chicago... <laughs> Yeah, Chicago. I was gonna say, if you go to a Cubs game, that that amazed me. Every bar you go to is like bucket of beer, right? And, this and, that, like, and it's nice. ten a.m. Yeah, <laughs> says people in Florida, <laughs> they want jobs that don't drug test. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Again, very apropos. Again, these are the most unique job-related things each state Google's more than any other state. Uh, number three, it says a, a few states have very specific work-related searches. Louisiana, Louisiana wants Cajun jobs. Cajun jobs. Cajun jobs. I think that means just jobs that are familiar in the area, like being a shrimp boat captain. Right. Yeah, that's what I say. You know, shuck, shucking oysters. It's every goddamn thing there. People right. in Tennessee. Oh, mm-hmm. People in Tennessee are looking for careers at Hot Topic. <laughs> wow. Is Hot Topic even a- around? It yeah, is in Tennessee. Tennessee. It's everywhere. Apparently. Right. I mean, it's still around. I just, I don't know about Tennessee. Hot Topic. I didn't know that it was such a hot topic in, in Tennessee. I guess they have a younger demo there, man. Maybe. Hot Topic is a kid's clothing store, right? Yeah. We already kids, went. teen, tween. Yeah. Okay. And I know a lot of chicks, that, even adults now, they're like, look, because my wife will say this, says, all right, if we, like, we're going to Vegas, and we're just going to get pissed drunk. If there's, my understanding is this, if a woman legitimately believes there's a chance that she will vomit on herself, 
and it's that kind of experience. We're going to, you know this yep. in advance. Like, we're going to the Gorge, we're going to Vegas. Hot Topic and Forever 21. They're like, look, you go there, apparently the S is cheap. We don't care if we puke on it. Oh, right. So if your fiance says, hey, I need to go to Hot Topic, that's a night you want to go out with it. Yeah, it's supposed to be like... Because she's about to throw it's down. It's supposed to be like counterculture, right? I guess. I just remember as a kid going there because they had the... Uh, they had all the giant posters. Yeah. And then oh, the, yeah. there was always some hot chick ones. They do have a lot of posters there. They got a lot of band tees, a lot of emo and goth bands, and a, a lot of more of the metally tied bands there. A lot of the vampire kids went there for a little while. And yeah, that was like the stuff. vampire. I need yeah. some black lace to let people know my plant died. Yeah, how much blood have you actually sucked, dude? Yeah. <laughs> might see. be surprised, homie. <laughs> like, oh. The phrase cheese jobs is popular in... Wisconsin. Nailed it. Come on. I mean, Jeez. step outside of it a bit. Man. Several states are looking for something a little bit easier. Kentucky's top search is easy jobs. <laughs> All right. Easy uh, jobs. Virginia wants the least stressful job. Okay. Well, they have to drive in traffic for two hours to get anywhere. So Northern so Virginia, they do, yeah. Uh, Delaware just wants to know, quote, how to win the lottery. Damn, you're not even trying, you Delaware. Enter, man. <laughs> That's how you win the lottery. There's a lot of lottery winners from Delaware, though. As small of a state it is, it seems like there's a, like a small grocer in Delaware. You're like, get out of here. You know what, right? man? You're right. I'm serious. That's fair, yeah. For such a teeny, tiny spot, there's a lot of winners. Mm-hmm. Mike, do you know the states that border Delaware? Uh, I can look at them here. Nope. That's just kind of the point. <laughs> She's New Jersey and Maryland, but... <laughs> right. Not Pennsylvania? Philly? Uh, yeah, I think Philly I think touches it. Philly does, does, yeah. All right. I only know I that because that's where our it. rental car from Enterprise broke down, and they won't come and get you. New Jersey's top search is how to become a billionaire. New Jersey. That's, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems to make sense. Ted, are you, is not this, enough, year, right? this year, you know, next year, I'm buying this beach house. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, are you ready for Maryland? Uh, uh, crab fishing. They want to know if you can get paid to watch Netflix. Oh. That Get was. off your ass, Marilyn. Damn. The thing is that it's put out there. How many how many reports did I bring to you guys? It was like, hey, Netflix is looking for but, somebody to watch a new series. Yeah, but somebody. They're not like, hey, it's not like Amazon at the holidays. Right. Where, hey, we need thousands. <laughs> so you could be like, right. hell of you. It's just unique. <laughs> we got, we got Coca-Cola like, and I, Hot Pockets. I thought these were popular ones. That's why I asked Mike to right. clarify. Right, unique. Okay. unique. Right. What about Washington? Again, these are the most unique job-related things each state Googles more than any other state. Right here in Washington State. IT jobs. Close. What's the other big one that we have here? Even bigger. Amazon jobs. Oh. Aero, aerospace. Aerospace. Uh, no, Miles is on the right track. It's not Amazon. Microsoft jobs. Keep going. Who the hell do we have? Amazon. Uh, Costco jobs. Starbucks jobs. <laughs> there you go. Starbucks jobs. All right. <laughs> it's Starbucks. It's a great place right. to work, man. You go into a Starbucks and you fill out an application. <laughs> right. Again, it is a great place to work. Every yeah. Starbucks that I've ever gone oh. into, honestly, I have described it as like a beehive. It is just... And constantly, there's eight people behind that counter. They are running like chickens with their head cut they off. They get insurance. Working like they get a lot of stuff. Like I, I like what they do, but again, it's not like there's a lot of hoops you got to jump through. They'll, well, they'll put up a sign right. that says like yeah. "We're hiring." It's a but, yeah, yeah. They, but they also let you move up the ladder. Like there was a, yeah, right. the last manager at the Starbucks in the building we worked. Right? Mm-hmm. She was nice as hell. They enjoyed seeing her. Right? One day she's gone. They sent her to corporate. She moved up the ladder. You know, you like, and she started at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. So like, I was like, well. Dude, I, I had some buddies that, work at, that worked at Dick's. They swear by working there, too. Really? Nice. Yeah. Well, good on them. Good, good, good. Again, uh, most new, most unique job-related things. Each state Googles more than any other state. Uh, let's see. Arizona's top search. What should I do with my life? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's, All right. Yeah, it's that's, dark. Yeah. We're gonna keep, looking for a job at that point. We're going to keep getting dark. Colorado's is quarter tired life. tired of going to the pool every day. <laughs> right. Quarter life crisis. Why did that become a term? You're quarter 25. Life Times are different, Ted. I'm at a qu- I'm at my quarter life. I'm actually a little bit beyond my quarter life, and now this pandemic's coming down the line, man. But Things the are weird. difference with that it. is all of us. You yeah. can be 15, 25. My kids, <laughs> right. It sucks for them, too. My kid's not like, I'm having a tenth of a life crisis. I mean, it's just... Economy's in the toilet. Yeah, I try not to hate on that generation. Let's get over this quarter life crisis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do want to put those kinds of labels on everything, don't they? Yeah. Uh, let's see. New Yorkers can't stop Googling hate my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, you got to remember the mentality. Right. Please, if you're going to hey. do that, don't do it on the company computer or the company Wi-Fi. They can and do know who <laughs> is, is Googling that. Uh, let's see here. Pennsylvania is looking for, quote, sleeping at work advice. <laughs> I need a job where I can sleep. That's PennDOT. Dude, overnight security. I love it. Our friends of the South Oregon stop searches. How do I call in sick? <laughs> call in and say you're sick. That feels like a very Northwest problem. 
we're too anxious to call in. You know, if we're like legit sick, we feel too bad and we don't want to call in and, and tell them. Like, Do hey, not feel bad. Can I, I can't make it. Like, we don't want to make doggone appointments for ourselves because we don't like to talk to the real world. You don't have to make an appointment. Just don't go to work. Right. This country works more than any other country, man. Go ahead. Take a goddamn day off. Exactly. Connecticut wants to know how do I get, how to get fired. Yeah. All right. <laughs> they already got enough money. I so say you got enough leniency there if you have to ask. <laughs> I'm often told if I do something again, like I figured out how to get fired, do that thing the boss is yelling at me about again. See, so yeah, like they're uh, Missouri wants Cardinals jobs. Jeez. Iowa's looking for good excuses. <laughs> Just good excuse. Montana is looking for uh, Canada jobs. Huh? Oh. Idaho, Ted, you need, you need to move to Idaho. They're looking for work memes. Oh. <laughs> Nevada looking for desk jobs. Let's see. Uh, New Mexico, pistachio farm. It's all great. Pistachio. Okay. Wow. Pistachio. That's, That's real nuts. specific. Firefighters in Missouri, Missouri were called to a sporting goods store. Why? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, my cock. Headlines are on the way one hour from now. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile This. We will take caller 9 at 206-421-ROCK. All right, we made it to drinking time.